Hey guys and welcome back! In this video we're going to build a leg and learn more about custom guides and space switching. Let's pick this up where we left off in the previous video. So far we've got our local control and our CRG control created using a free control module and we've got our spine set up using an FK chain module. Great this is all set to continue and before we move on to creating our limbs I want to tweak a few more settings and cover one more subject. At the moment the control shapes for the COG and the local controls are slightly small and quite difficult to locate. For that I have a control shapes multiplier attribute within the common settings of the modules for us to be able to scale those up without actually needing to customize the control shape and extract them. Let's do that real quick. I'm going to deconstruct, I'm going to go into my local and press the model settings and this is the attributes I was referring to the controls multiplier, this is going to multiply our control shapes. For the local I'm going to use a value of 30 and for the COG I'm going to use a value of 20. I'm going to update my settings and reconstruct and now my control shapes are slightly bigger so I can locate them a bit easier. Also before moving forwards I want to tweak a few more attributes in my spine module. I'm going to deconstruct and I'm going to choose my spine module and go into the module settings and I'm going to change my FK control shape into a dial round shape and I'm going to change my embedded IK control shape to be a square. Great, we're all good to go. Now for our limbs we're going to use a limb module. I'm going to select my COG as the parent guide and double click the limb module. I'm going to go in a bit faster pace since you already know the basics. I'm going to call this body leg and I'm going to choose a different side for this component. It's not going to be a center, it's going to be a left side component. We're going to build all of our left side components for the entire puppet and then we're going to symmetrize them. You'll see that this module has many layers and features as well, but since this model is quite simple, I think the base state will suffice. Let's go ahead and build the limb guides. The limb guides have been created. Let's show them in the outliner underneath the COG, and I'm going to place them real quick. What I've done off screen is simply place my guides. I've got my upper leg, I've got my knee position, and I've got my ankle position. That brings me to another subject, which is the custom guides. We've seen a custom guides before at the entity of the attribute host, but some of these locators are being used to dictate positions that don't need to have a related join to them. For example, we've got our attribute host, which of course does not have a related joint, which we can place roughly in here, but a new addition is the pole vector position. You can see another custom guide in here which dictates the position of the pole vector. I'm going to take this custom guide and pull this out into roughly this position. Let's go into the module settings again and slightly up the controls multiplier so we can see them clearly and construct our puppet again. Now I can see my new control shapes. I've got an IK handle and the pole vector controls. I can move my icon handle and everything is fine. I can also go into my attribute host and switch it to an FK. And that's my IK FK switcher. Great, so that is roughly it for the limb. Let's keep going to build our foot. I'm going to deconstruct. I'm going to select the end guide of the limb for the parent of the foot and I'm going to use a foot module. I'm going to select two controls for the number of guides since I've got a simple human foot which has only one FK division. I'm going to keep this body as foot which will do me just fine for now and the block side I'm going to keep as left which was set automatically since the parent module is set to left as well. I'm going to go into the module settings and inspect some of them out. I'm going to keep my FK control shapes as cube 
I'm going to use a diamond for my BK controls, which are the backwards kinematic controls. I'm going to do bang controls and I'm going to use a light sphere control shape. I'm going to do a roll control, which we're going to see pretty soon. And I'm going to use a cylinder control shape for that. And I'm going to skip the dynamic pivot control for now. Let's build our guides. Let's frame those up in the outliner. Now I've got my main foot guide, which is placed exactly where my end of the limb is placed, which is exactly the position that I want. And I've got my FK position as well, which I'm going to roughly place in here. I also have a few custom guides created as well, which dictate the position of my bank controls. Let's place those quickly as well. So what I've done off screen again is quickly place my bank pivots. I've got my tip pivot, my heel pivot, my outer pivot and my inner pivot all set up. Great. Let's construct and see what we've got. I'm going to turn off the visibility for the model just so we can take a closer look at the joint structure. I've got my icon handle, which I had before. I've got my FK control for my foot. I've got my bank controls for the bank pivots. I've got my BK control, which is the backwards kinematics control. And I've got my wall control, which rolls around the FK controls and at the backwards rotation uses the heel wall control, which rolls around. Before we move on to create our arms, I want to cover another important subject. And this subject is space switching. Of course, in animation, we don't always use the parent space as the space for the controls. We want to allow animation to switch the spaces while they animate. And for that, we've got a specific section in the module attribute called spaces. Let's take a look at some of the spaces at the constructed state so we can understand better how this mechanism works. Let's take a closer look at our icon handle and see that we've got a space switch attribute in here. For every module, there are specific controls that can accept a space switch. These are set up in the module construction. For every control, if it's set to accept a space switch, a space switching mechanism is going to be created for it automatically. The first automatic space that's going to be created is obviously the parent module, which is the default space for all controls. The second one is the world control. The world control always exists, so it's very beneficial to always have that space available. If there are any internal spaces set within the module, those will be created as well. To show you a practical explanation of space switching, we're going to take a look at this IK handle. At the moment, this IK handle space is set to leg root, which is the root control, this one. As I move, it's not really an IK behavior. since the space is set to follow the root control. And this comes handy as I want to animate, since this is an IK control, I want to set this up to be the world control. So now as I move my parent module, the IK handle stays put, which is exactly what I want. So what if I want to add more spaces? Well, that's no problem. I have a specific section for that in the module common settings. Let's take a look at the leg settings. I'm going to go into the space attribute section and in here I've got a list that I can edit and add more spaces if I require them. In this specific case, the world control doesn't necessarily help us because we've created a local secondary control at origin. So we want to add that in. I'm going to select my local guide and add it into the list. As simple as that. Valid object types for spaces are guides, joints, and interp joints. Now I'm going to update my settings and I'm going to construct. And I'm going to take a look at the spaces created for the IK handle. Now I've got an added space, the local control, which is the one that I want for now. As I move the local control, I want my IK handle to follow. But as I move my COG, I want my IK handle to stay put. Great, so we've got basic space switching covered. 
We're going to cover split spaces as well when we construct our arm. We're going to take a look at that pretty soon. Let's stop this video here and continue on the next one. In the next video, we're going to build the shoulder, arm and fingers. I hope you find this video helpful and in any case, I'd appreciate any feedback in the comments. Please like, share and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.